Hey guys, it's Tom here with MYT Solar. We just finished up an install on this 25 RDS outdoors RV. One of the questions we get asked a lot and is pretty relevant to this install is, well, it's a few questions. Firstly, it's once I go to a big MYT setup, do I still need portable solar? That's one of the questions. The other, one of the other questions is if I'm going to a big MYT setup and I'm taking off all that factory solar, often there's two or three panels already on here from the factory. What can I do with those panels? And then the third question is the, the port on the side that comes from the factory, an external style port, the ZAMP plug-in that's on the side of the RV, can we continue to use that with a Victron system? We'll talk about that as I walk you through this system today. On this 25 RDS, we had 1500 watts put on here of rich solar, 250 watt panels. We did not use our rails. We didn't need to cover any skylights. We didn't need to remove the wine guard. Didn't need to cover any vents or anything like that. We we're able to get 1500 watts in a pretty nice layout here. Plenty of walking space off the ladder. We've got room next to the air conditioner. I have most of the panels nice and in the sun. Maybe a little shade from the air conditioner on one of these occasionally, but with these tall brackets, we put them, the brackets on end to end uh, of these panels, which allowed us to move the panels out um, far out to the side, uh, which is avoiding some of the shading from the air conditioner. With this 1500 watts on the roof, which is obviously going to generate a lot of power for this customer and charge up their big system, which we'll see downstairs. Again, that question is, do they need portable solar and that was honestly one of the first questions they asked when they dropped off the trailer to us they said hey do I need to use can I still use my portable panel and we'll talk about that in a little more in detail let's go as I mentioned upstairs we use those taller brackets which you can see from down the side here reveals a lot of air underneath that panel which is going to keep that panel cooler also allow for some maintenance it's just easier sometimes when these panels go down you can barely see under the panel or get to under the panel often when we remove those older panels the the roof underneath is just grimy and but luckily with these tall panels some roof maintenance will still be possible the customer didn't opt for the leds in this situation hopefully you can still see all the components but a big system we've got 1500 watts on the roof as i've mentioned three of the 330 amp hour victron batteries so 990 amp hours the victron 3000 watt Multi plus inverter charger. Obviously, when we're plugged in, that thing will be juicing up the batteries. And when they're unplugged, which is obviously the main reason that they hired us, is that when they're unplugged, their air conditioner can still run, their outlets can still run, the microwave can still run. No need for the generator. This customer said, I am sick of lugging around two generators. Hopefully, we've solved that issue for them a little bit. All the Victron components. And with these Victron batteries, they really need to be charged by Victron components. For this customer, they'll have two MPPTs. They're gonna have the one for the roof solar, which is obviously our, our larger one here. And then they'll have the one here for the portable port that we built. And what's really nice is that Victron charge controller is gonna do a great job versus the built-in charge controller on those portable panels. Often they're not even a P an MPPT charge controller, they're a PWM charge controller. So, and that's definitely most of the time not Victron. So it's going to be great, great to have that built in. Talking about that outside port, which is the cut, what the customer mentioned when we first started working on the trailer. Right here on this particular trailer, you can see this external port for a plug-in portable panel. That's pretty common on a lot of RVs. All this really is, is just two wires to the battery, a positive and a negative wire to the battery with some fusing in there. And what that means is that you don't just hook up a straight up solar panel to this. It has to be one of the solar panels that has a built-in charge controller, usually stuck to the back of it. Now, this, that's what this customer has been using in this port, is one of those portable panels with the charge controller stuck to the back of it, which has been perfect to plug into here and charge their lead acid batteries. Now that we have Victron batteries on the other end of this port, it's important that those batteries get the charge that they need and not some charge from some random controller on the back of a portable panel. What we do when the customer still wants to keep using portable panels is we build an Anderson port on the trailer, which you can see over here. So there you can see where we've mounted the Anderson port, which is essentially just another line, line into, the, into the trailer, into our system that we put in. With that, 
That is now running to a Victron charge controller. Inside, you might have noticed a, a big charge controller for the panels that are on the roof and a smaller one that's connected to that port. Now again, we need that Victron charge controller to be in charge of regulating the voltage from the solar panel. The customer's portable panel that they had, had the charge controller built into it. Luckily, they sent me some photos this week and they said, hey, look, it looks like we can easily bypass that controller, which is great. That controller is no longer in, in that line of that flow of electricity from that portable panel, which means that now they can plug that portable panel straight into this port. It's gonna feed that Victron charge controller. Those Victron batteries will be getting exactly what they need because it's a Victron charge controller. Also, they'll actually be able to see the solar harvest on our Touch 70 screen inside from the panels that are out on the ground. I think I've answered that question on, on whether that, that port will still be active. No, it won't but we can make one that's even better, quite frankly, with the Victron charge controller. The other question people ask again is, if we've already got two of these are here on from the factory and we remove them, what can we do with them? Well, if you look at our video, a few videos of ours, uh, a video or two back, you will see that one of our customers actually had a thousand watts of these factory panels on their roof, five of them. When we remove them, what can we do with them? Well, because we've built that port, they can now take these panels and that's what the customer a few videos back has done. They've got five of them out in the sun on their property. Those panels are collecting a thousand watts on the ground plus their X amount of watts on the roof. These panels can still be used, when they come off, they can still be used as portable panels. Now, if you can find somewhere to carry them, these obviously aren't as ideal as the little briefcase style. It's that question of what, what is the point of the factory solar that we remove. It's not totally redundant. I do have quite a few of these sitting around that I've taken off that customers haven't wanted, but that's an option is to continue to use them. We have customers that have put them on their trucks as, and used them as external panels on the truck. Our truck, we actually have a thousand watts on the roof of our truck. That kind of is like our portable panel. We can park the sun in the truck, in the, in the sun. There's a lot of creative things like that that you can do. Again, I think that final question that we get is, do I actually need a portable solar panel? And that was kind of the conversation that this couple had when they, when they were here at the start of the week. And they're like, we're getting 1500 watts on the solar. Do we need the portable one? They're like, well, we already have the panel. Let's integrate it into this trailer as well. And I think, yes, I think portable solar, even when you have roof solar is very important. Mostly because a lot of the time, unfortunately, we like to park in the shade. We like to camp in the shade. And maybe that trailer and the roof, the roof solar is getting quite a lot through parts of the day, but there might be parts of the day where it's shaded. Having the ability to use a portable panel, a 200 watt or a 400 watt foldable, nice portable panel into this system, have it on a nice, say, 30 foot lead, have it out in pure sun on a little stand, 45 degrees to the sun, that panel is gonna actually do really, really well because you've, you've optimized it, you've, you've chased the sun with it, you can keep it at 45 degrees. And what's nice about tying it in with the Victron system is you'll actually know what that portable panel is doing. So in the Touch 70 here, you'll see the total solar, but you can go down and you can see the breakdown. Oh, I'm getting this much from my solar on the ground, I'm getting this much from my solar on the roof. So it's really nice to be able to see that. Hopefully that answered a few questions about portable solar versus roof solar whether you still need it, whether you can even still use it if you do want it, things like that. I'd be curious to know if you guys have roof solar, are you still using portable panels and how important that is to you. Thanks for watching the video. This is Tom with MYT Solar. Cheers.